Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third lecture of the architectural course. Today, we will be talking about roof structures and designing firewalls. We will also examine how to place gutters and downspouts. For the roof design, we will use the contour of the closing slab that we created in the previous workshop. With this, we will easily draw the roof structure. To create the roof, we will use the roof in sketch command found in the building menu. There are several roof commands to choose from, but for simplicity, we will select the most basic one. On the left side, you can find the pre-saved styles. For example, we could choose a steel roof or a ventilated roof structure, but for now, we will create a simple roof structure. I will draw it along the contour of the closing slab. Starting from here, I begin drawing it. I will zoom in to work precisely. Instead of the last two clicks, I will choose the perpendicular closing command. This way, the program closes the shape and create the roof. We need to make some adjustments since it is not positioned correctly and we will modify some other properties as well. I click on the roof and then on the pencil icon. In this dialog, we can modify and set various properties of the roof. Let's take a look at the first six options. We can set the eaves purlin, the middle purlin, the rafter, the collar beam, the ridge board, and the batten, for example, their cross-sectional profile, material, and other properties. As we are working with a simple roof, we won't set them. These layers are currently turned off, so we will only work with the roof shell. Let's start with the roof elevation, because we can see that the roof position is not right. The small diagram will help us understand exactly what the letters signify. So, the elevation is represented by C, which is minus 300 millimeters. The next property is the eaves overhang, represented by L, which indicates how many millimeters the roof's outer plane extends from the main wall. Then, there's the theoretical wall width, which I won't change now, but it is usually the most common wall thickness shown on the floor plan. It is currently 380 millimeters, so that's why I won't modify it. I will also set the material for the roof side and the bottom. Currently, a wood material is selected, but I will choose bright white from the project library. When we link these two materials, the next option, in the top right corner, is the preview model representation mode. I choose the textured option. The next section is roof tiling. Here, I can set the roof tiles, the ridge, and the valley. Let's change the roof tiles to classic. If I can't find it in the favorites library, I can use the blue plus button to search for it. Now let's move on to the ridge. I will also choose the classic roof material. Let's see these changes after refreshing the preview. The last thing I need to change is the valley's material. I will also select classic and refresh the view. The next section is projections and cut. This allows us to determine which level the finished roof will be visible at, and how it should be marked. We will leave these settings as they are for now. Here, we can also set the cut plane to determine, at which level the roof cuts the walls. Currently, it is set to cut only at its own level, and that's fine. In the next tab, we can adjust the roof geometry, including the layer thickness. We can determine the type of roof for each roof plane in the pitch and shape section. Currently, all are set to a hipped roof, but we will modify this. First, I will change the roof pitch angle. When the All Planes option is activated, I can change the angle for all planes at once. Let's set it to 25 degrees. After refreshing the view, we can see the modified roof. 
I will change the angle for two roof planes. So, I disable the all planes option. I select the roof plane that I want to modify and change the angle to 35 degrees. I will do the same for the other side. Then, after refreshing, we can see the changes. I will set this right side roof plane as a gable end because it will connect to the neighboring building and we will create a firewall there. So, I select the roof plane, switch to gable end and then refresh the view. With all the settings done, I accept them with OK. Let's take a look in 3D. To make space for the firewall, I will move back this roof plane to the inner side of the main wall. I select the roof in the floor plan, click on the contour, and then use the offset command to move it back to the inner roof plane on both sides. Now, the roof is ready. Now, let's create the firewall. For this, I will go to the first level, and I'll copy the right main wall to the second level. I select the main wall, click on the level dialog, and choose the copy to other level command. Then select the second level. We still need to modify the wall height. It should be 4,500 millimeters. We also need to extend it to reach the closing slab. I click on the small arrow marker, and then I can extend the wall to this corner point. With this, we are almost done, but we still need to shape the firewall in 3D view. I switch to a view, where we can almost see the firewall from the front, and I'll create guidelines with the line command. I need to select the surface where I want to place these lines, which is the firewall. I start drawing the line to this point, then press enter to finish. Then, I draw the line on the other side, following the roof's pitch angle, and press enter to finish it. Now, I set the view to display only the firewall and the guidelines in 3D. I select the firewall and using the 3D hammer, I rebuild the model to see only the guidelines in the firewall. I will copy these two lines to 300 mm higher, because the firewall will rise 300 mm above the roof. I'll use the drafting menu, offset command. I select the line I want to copy, then I start pulling the mouse upward, and I enter 300. I do the same with the other line, then press enter to accept it, and it's done. I delete the unnecessary lines. Let's connect these two lines. For this, I'll use the Both Objects option, which works similarly to the L and T joint commands. I select the two lines and the program connects them. To cut off the unnecessary part of the firewall, I use the Drafting menu and the Push Slash Pull command. I select the section of the wall I want to delete. If we look at it from the side, we can see that we can push it in one direction and pull it in the other direction, which means we can extrude or delete. I extrude it here, and it's done. I delete the guidelines, then set the material of the firewall. I right-click on the firewall, then choose the Find Material command. The material library appears on the left, and I find the material used on this wall. I drag and drop it onto the wall's layer, and choose the replacing one material with another command. The firewall is done. To see the entire building again, I rebuild the 3D model, deselecting everything in 3D. Let's see how the building looks in 3D now. The next topic will be about designing gutters and downspouts, which we can also create in 3D. Under the building, roof menu, there's the gutter command. I choose on which plane I want to place it. I select the side of the roof, and the gutter is created along this path. Here, I can choose a cross-sectional profile from the favorites, or click the plus button to select other profiles. I won't modify it now, instead, I'll adjust the offsets. The horizontal offset from the path will be 100, 
and the vertical offset will be minus 200. It's done. What I still need to adjust is the material. I choose the steel material. I can place the downspouts in the next tab. I set the length to 5,900 millimeters. The first drain will have a distance of 5,700 from the right side. And I create it with a green check mark. Clicking the green plus button, I add another downspout to this gutter. Its length is also 5,900 millimeters, and it will be at a distance of 7,800 millimeters from the left side. Then, I place it with a green check mark. I'm done, so I accept it with OK. And the gutter is complete. In the next step, I will download 3D objects and place them in the project. I will place a solar panel on this inclined roof. I can do this at the interior, 3D warehouse menu. I'll use the direct download method. To download objects for free from here, you need to sign in with your Trimble account first. I type LSX Solar in the search bar and I download this solar panel. I click on the download button and choose the 2023 model. It's advisable to use the model that matches your program version, or an older one. The program downloads it, and I can place it in 3D or on the floor plan. Currently, we are in 3D view, so I select the roof plane and place the solar panel. The next modification I need to make is to change its pitch angle of the panel. I select the model, then in the properties, I change the tilting ahead value to 25 degrees. I also want to create three more solar panels, which I will do on the floor plan. First, I move the solar panel a bit to the side. Then I choose the move, multiple copies with spacing command. I set the number of copies to three, and accept it with OK. I select the left reference point, then align it with the right reference point. This way, I put four solar panels next to each other. I'm done with this step. The last topic I'd like to talk about is placing columns. On the ground floor, we will place three columns, which are already pre-drawn here. We can place and adjust their properties using the building menu, column command. I right-click and choose properties. Their dimensions will be 300 by 200 millimeters. And we'll use a rectangular profile. I'll choose the middle bottom point as the reference point. I change the material of both the body and the surface to a stone cladding that I find in the building, exterior finishes. Let's say stonewall underscore 048. And then I set both of them to have the same material. I also set the base offset, which will be minus 200 millimeters, and the overall height will be 2,700 millimeters. I also want to create an extrusion on top of the column. I click on the cutout, recess, attachment menu item, and using the insert button to create an extrusion. As we can see, it has been created as a cut at the bottom of the column. I change its profile. I click on the Select Profile button and choose a rectangular profile. The dimensions of this profile are fine. However, I need to set its vertical position to be the top instead of the bottom. I change the type to an attachment in the drop-down menu. Also, the start of the extrusion will be minus 150 mm from the reference plane, and its thickness will be 100 mm. I set the reference point to the bottom middle point and accept it with OK. This way, it will be perfectly centered. Once these settings are done, I set the materials of the body and the cover. I choose the Concrete 3 material, which we've used before in the workshops, so it's easy to find it in the project library. I accept it with OK. Clicking on the column command, I place the column with the set properties. We can see that I use the middle bottom point to place the column, which allows me to position it correctly everywhere. I can also rotate this column by minus or plus 90 degrees. 
Let's take a look at it in 3D. We can see that these columns have been placed correctly, but I need to adjust the height of this particular column as it doesn't reach the bottom of the balcony. I click on it and in the properties menu, I modify the height to 2800 millimeters. With this, we have reached the end of today's workshop and the building is now fully completed. In the next video, we will work on creating the documentation. I hope this material was useful for you and see you next time. Have a nice day. Goodbye.